So the passion translation has been canceled. Mike Winger on Twitter posted this. I think this was yesterday as I'm recording this. BibleGateway.com has removed the passion translation from its site. And he says this is good. So Mike Winger's tweet is the first that I had seen of this situation. Although it's actually not breaking news. Uh, this actually is something that people have been talking about for at least several days. But this is the first that I've heard about it. And since I do talk about Bible translation on my channel, you can check out other videos that I've done on the subject. I figured it would be good to mention this to my audience and hear your feedback on this. The Passion Translation has been very controversial for a while. Mike Winger actually has done, I believe, a series really talking about the problems with this Bible translation. So I'm not surprised to see that his opinion on this is that it is a good thing, according to him, that the Passion Translation has been taken off of the BibleGateway.com website. Now, I was curious as to what the reason was for this, if there was any explicit reason given for them taking this translation off of their website. Bible Gateway, uh, which I'm looking at right here, has a lot of Bible translations available in different languages, but here are English translation languages. You can see quite a few there. And they really have quite a variety of translations, different theological backgrounds. So it's interesting they've taken this off of their site. The Passion Translation is no longer there at this point. So in looking at this, I found this article from eternitynews.com in Australia, I believe, is where this organization is centered. And uh, they have this article saying Bible Gateway removes the Passion Translation, and they talk about this situation in a little bit of detail. I think it's a pretty helpful article, so I will leave a link to this article in the video description so that you can read it in its entirety. This was just written a couple of days ago as I'm recording this from John Sandman. It says, Bible Gateway, a popular site that contains a wide range of Bible versions, has removed the Passion Translation. The Passion Translation, TPT, has attracted controversy because it is a very loose paraphrase rather than a translation of the translation that contains a theological bias. So that's a very weird phrase there, a, rather than a translation of the translation. <laughs> I think that should say rather than a translation of the original languages. That would be a better way to put that. Anyway, it says going on here, Brian Simmons the church planter who produced the Passion Translation's original version is unhappy if a widely circulated image of a Facebook post is genuine. So cancel culture is alive in the church world. Bible Gateway just removed TPT from their platform, he writes on social media. He asks people to tell Bible Gateway they want the Passion Translation back. So um, I'm sure that uh, Bible Gateway is going to get response. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised, actually, if they've gotten a lot of positive response for taking the Passion Translation off of their website. But uh, according to this, Brian Simmons, the Passion Translation creator, wants people to kind of petition Bible Gateway to put it back on their web website. But uh, I'd love to hear in the comments if you have actually contacted Bible Gateway and given your opinion to them. Going on here, though, it says, When Eternity covered the arrival of the Passion Translation, the Bible Society's translation consultant, John Harris, explained what a paraphrase is. And this is very important to the discussion because what the article is basically saying is that the Passion Translation isn't really a translation. It's, it's much more of a paraphrase. So we need to understand when we're talking about Bible translation, the difference between a translation and a paraphrase. So it says here, to paraphrase is to expand or add to the original words in order to enhance their meaning, Harris wrote. Sometimes a Bible translation requires more than one word to make the meaning clear. So you know from, you know, normal conversation that it is possible to paraphrase someone. If you 
uh, maybe have a quote that you're thinking of and, and you can't think of the exact wording of it, you might paraphrase it and give the general thought behind the quote. So that's basically what a paraphrase is. So this Bible consultant, John Harris, talks a little bit about uh, different paraphrases, uh, such as the message. He says there are versions like the message which add a lot more words and expand the text. Eugene Peterson never calls the message the Bible. He admits that it is free form and intended to help us understand the Bible, but that it is not the Bible. Now that is an interesting point here uh, that one of the criticisms of the Passion Translations is that it is claiming to be the Word of God, claiming to be the Bible and not just a paraphrase. It actually has translation in its title, the Passion Translation. But it is saying here, uh, according to this article, that the message doesn't claim to be a translation, or as it puts it here, doesn't claim to be the Bible. But I would actually push back on that some, because if you look at the message website, first of all, the, the actual website is messagebible.com. And right here on the title page, it says the message, the Bible in contemporary language. So even if Eugene Peterson, the creator of the message, downplayed calling the message the Bible itself. In its marketing, you can see here it is being touted as the Bible. So I'm not sure there's a, a, a total difference there between what the message has done and what the Passion is doing, except that the Passion specifically does say it is the Passion translation. So that is one difference is that the title of these works. But going on, Harris warned that paraphrases can go too far. The task of a Bible translator is different from that of a writer of a paraphrase, says Harris. There are several problems with paraphrases which Bible translators must strictly avoid. The first is temptation to add too much to the original text. This is the kind of thing the message do sometimes does, but Peterson does not claim that what he has written is the Word of God. And I've already talked about, you know, the fact that the message, in some ways, I do think this is the problem with a paraphrase. It gets conflated in people's minds with a translation. So even if Eugene Peterson didn't intend for people to think of the message as directly being the Word of God, a lot of people do take it that way. So it's interesting to see kind of a defense of the message while at the same time this article is... It, it, kind of looking more negatively toward the Passion Translation. But anyway, going on here, it says, the second temptation is to add things which were never there in the first place, to put explanations in the text itself. Here lies the real danger because there is always the temptation to add words which push the text toward a particular theological position. The Passion Translation is a good example of this according to Harris. So we're going to look at an example that they give here. But I do want to say in all of this that obviously you can see my view kind of coming out here that I'm not a big fan of paraphrases because I think it, it, it tends to confuse people. They tend to think of paraphrases as actually being the same thing as a faithful translation. And I think there really is a difference. Now, can you use a paraphrase? Could it be helpful to you? Probably if you think of it more as a commentary. So if you pick up the message, for example, and you say, I'm just going to use this as kind of a commentary, one person's thoughts on what the meaning of the text is, that could be helpful. But I don't think that's the same thing as a translation. And if you want to learn more about good, solid, faithful, accurate translations of the Bible, I do talk about that in other videos on my channel. So I encourage you to check out those videos. But getting back to the Passion Translation and the paraphrasing that they actually do and the theological bent that comes out in this translation, they give this example from the original version of the Passion Translation. Philippians 1-2 says, In the NIV, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So that's the NIV, pretty straightforward translation of the original language. In the TPT, 
The same phrase reads, We decree over your lives the blessings of divine grace and supernatural peace that flow from God, our wonderful Father, and our anointed Messiah, the Lord Jesus. The issue is a bit obvious. Greek has 11 words, the NIV 14 words, TPT 27 words. So you see there is definitely paraphrasing going on there. And that's why it is a problem to call it a translation, the Passion Translation, because in reality it's not strictly a translation. It is a paraphrase adding the author's or the paraphraser's thoughts to what the original author said. So it says here there are obviously many additional words and uh, going to the next paragraph it says a far more worrying phrase that you see there in the Passion is we decree over your lives. Not only are these added words which were not in the original, but they express a particular theology. Paul as an apostle, according to this translation, in quotes, had power over the giving of the grace of God. An apostle had the power, uh, the decree that grace be given. That was based on what TPT said in 2019. So originally, when this translation came out, it had these phrases that had a very obvious theological bent to them. Now, it does say here that verse reads in an updated Passion Translation, May the blessings of divine grace and supernatural peace that flow from God, our wonderful Father, and our Messiah, the Lord Jesus, be upon your lives. This is a radical change back towards how true translations render that verse. The newer editions of the Passion Translation appear to contain revisions that follow this pattern. So while that is a good trend that they are uh, moving the Passion Translation in a more doctrinally sound direction and more accurate translation of the originals, the real problem I think from the beginning is that this was claiming to be some sort of God led version that when the person Brian Simmons worked on this God was really leading him in this particular way of translating and yet now it's being revised so if God is really behind this particular effort you know it just shows there's a problem here when you're revising what the person originally did anyway going on here in a similar vein TBT's latest editions version of Galatians 1 6 now uh, has lost some additional words. A distorted gospel of salvation by works was originally there, which gave one particular interpretation of what Paul was saying. So the basic idea of what's being said here is that the Passion Translation has been modified in the last few years. Nevertheless, Zondervan has taken it off of BibleGateway.com. But I really wanted to see, you know, what were the reasons why Zondervan took this translation off of Bible Gateway? And it says here Zondervan has not given their reasons for dropping TPT. It may be a temporary absence from Bible Gateway as they assess changes to the Bible version, or it may be that the tension involved in calling a paraphrase a translation is causing difficulty or that Zondervan is waiting to see if the theological bias in the Passion Translation is corrected. Or it could even be a technical glitch. Now, I doubt that that is the reason because I've never noticed before a technical glitch on Bible Gateway causing them to remove another translation. I could be wrong, uh, but I don't think that has ever been the case. But um, these are the possible reasons, but no stated reason has actually been given from Zondervan. From what I have heard, at least, uh, there is no, no particular reason that has been given, but it is reasonable to assume it probably has to do with doctrinal issues. Bible Gateway, though it does have a lot of translations, doesn't have, for example, the New World Translation, which is the Jehovah's Witness translation of the Bible. And so, yes, I do think that Bible Gateway will exclude translations for doctrinal reasons. So that seems like the most likely reason for the Passion Translation being taken off of the website. 
But the article concludes here, one good outcome would be to, to have the scholars who criticized the Passion Translation at the time of its launch to take a good look at where it is now. Has it been sufficiently improved? When what is now called the Living Bible was first released, it was criticized as being a paraphrase. However, it went from being the work of one person, Kenneth Taylor, to having a scholarly committee oversee it. And that, by the way, became what is called the New Living Translation. And it's interesting, though, that if you go on Bible Gateway, you will see that uh, the New Living Translation is on their website, but the original paraphrase by Kenneth Taylor, the Living Bible, right here is also on their website. So that's interesting that they've kept the original paraphrase that was, as this article says, criticized. But it says here that a similar process is occurring with the Passion Translation. It remains to be seen if that satisfies the concerns that Zondervan and others have. So very interesting indeed to see what will happen with all of this. I know um, that there have been a lot of people criticizing the Passion Translation, and I would say, yeah, it makes a lot of sense that there, there is criticism of this translation. Again, you can check out my channel to see more of what I have to say about Bible translation and what constitutes an accurate translation of the Bible, what you should be looking for when you are looking into Bible translations. But Mike Winger, who originally alerted me to this whole issue, uh, has a lot on uh, the Passion Translation himself, so you might want to check that out as well. But that is the news that at this point, the Passion Translation on Bible Gateway has indeed been canceled. I would love to hear what you think about all of this in the comment section below. Just keep those comments constructive and helpful to conversation. But thank you so much for taking some time to listen to some of my thoughts on this topic brought to you from a fresh perspective.